Good morning, baseball fans, and welcome back to Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Do not be fooled by the fancy name. It's just me and some friends talking about baseball cards. And uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I know that. Uh, I was away last weekend. Um, but today we have a special guest and a special show. Um, the baseball cards we're going to be talking about are those of New York Mets great Tom Seaver. And I'll introduce our guest in a few seconds, as you can see from the title of the video. It'll, it will be our friend Sammy Thunder. Um, but first, let's talk a little bit about Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver, also known as the franchise or Tom Terrific, uh, is perhaps the greatest man of all time. He was born in 1944 in Fresno, California. Uh, he began playing baseball and basketball at a young age and excelled at both, um, but uh, chose baseball. Uh, he went on to pitch for Fresno City College, and he was so good that he was uh, recruited by USC. And he pitched one season at USC as a sophomore uh, and was drafted by um, the Dodgers, but the Dodgers didn't you know, offer enough money, so he ended up uh, not signing with them. He was drafted again in January of 1967 by the, uh, I'm sorry, January 66. Uh, by the Atlanta Braves, but he had already played a couple of games that season, so his contract was deemed void. But the NCAA uh, deemed him ineligible because he had signed a professional contract. So uh, MLB took care of the situation by um, having a lottery amongst any of the teams that would match the Braves' offer from the contract. And ultimately, the Mets won that um, lottery. Uh, amazing bit of chance and luck for the Mets. Uh, Seaver was the 1967 uh, Rookie of the Year. He won the Cy Young with the Miracle Mets in 1969, two other Cy Youngs. And let's look at his amazing stats. Of course, he won 300 games, 311 games. Uh, pitched for the Mets until 1977. On June 15, 1977, it was what's known as the Midnight Massacre. Tom Seaver was traded to the Reds uh, for four players and ultimately um, – Pitched for the Reds for, I believe, five seasons. Returned to the Mets briefly in 1983. Was left unprotected and picked up by the White Sox and ultimately finished off uh, with the Red Sox. Had an injured knee. Tried to come back later on, but couldn't do it. So he retired. Uh, Tom Seaver lived um, until the age of 75. He died in 2020. Um, in his latter years, he uh, developed dementia. Um, but before that, he had been in his career, uh, post-career life. He was an announcer. Uh, he was a uh, extremely successful winemaker and ultimately uh, a Hall of Famer. So let me bring out my guest. Um, my guest is one of the good guys in the hobby. You'll know him as Sammy Thunder. Sammy um, has a channel which has done really well, going to shows, doing videos for shows, showing off cards, uh, interviewing all sorts of uh, people from the hobby, including once myself. And um, like I said, one of the good guys in the hobby and very happy to have him to talk about uh, one of his favorite players in mind, Tom Seaver. So how are you this morning, my friend? I'm hanging in there. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because um, I usually have – guests a little bit earlier in the morning, but I guess um, you and another younger member of the um, of the hobby uh, want a little later in the morning. So as a person who used to sleep until three o'clock in the afternoon when I was here, I certainly understand it. So. I mean, I generally do wake up really early, but yeah, this time I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of a later start. So I appreciate Good. that. Good. Well, I, I generally ask my guests, um, you know what their the history of their of their collecting the, coll the history of sports in their life and you know mm -hmm. obviously um this show is about Seaver, so it would really be what what uh what brings you to be you know a collector of tom Seaver. Uh, i grew up as a mets fan and the mets never i mean they've had pitchers come and go that have done really well but nobody like tom Seaver who is i mean they call him a franchise for the reason for a reason but somebody like him i feel like the mets have always been underdogs so for them to have somebody that can claim as their own a homegrown met 
who's come in and completely changed the game in terms of his pitching. And, you know, just that to me alone is uh, one of the many reasons why I enjoy collecting his cards. So um, I'm old enough to have seen Tom <laughs> Seaver pitch, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think you are, although I could be no. wrong about that. No, um, I, I uh, he retired. Like, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be like, you know, you know, I saw him, but you didn't know. And then I realized, like, everybody back here, other than, like, Seaver and Mays and Aaron, I never saw play. So I never saw mm -hmm. Mickey Mantle play or, you know, Warren Spawn or any of those guys. So it, it's kind of like it's great to have younger people in the hobby, and it doesn't matter whether you saw them play or not. You know how great they were, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean – I was given stories from my dad who actually met Tom Seaver when he was younger, uh, posted that photo a number of times, but, uh, yeah, I mean, when I was in high school, I'm, I was a pitcher and, um, or even before that going in, getting into pitching at like 10 or 11 years old, it was, uh, my, you know, my dad would say, uh, you know, make sure you get your, your driving leg as low as possible. Because that's the way Seaver did it. That will force your whole entire body to kind of just um, uh, pivot downwards so that the ball stays down. And so, yeah, there's a lot of Tom Seaver connections, uh, out, not even inside, like outside of the collecting aspect. It's, you know, there's a lot of family connections too. Yep. Well, that's awesome because uh, I think part of the reason I collected Warren Spawn was because of my father was a Boston Braves fan. So, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, see for drop and drive. I was a pitcher myself, uh, up through college division three college. So, uh, I know a little bit about that. I was less of, I was left-handed. So i uh, still, am left-handed. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was little, <laughs> not really a Seaver style, but, it, but the, the drop and drive was something that I definitely, um, you know, used. I mean, that, on that's occasion. something that, yeah, I mean, hit the drop and drive, uh, with his back leg. I mean, that's kind of, that was his secret in terms yeah. of being able to gain more velocity on his fastball and it's astounding with, you know, with the career that he had, I went to the white Plains show yesterday, the County center. Mm -hmm. And I bumped into uh, this guy named Joe. He has a table that he sets up at, uh, I think he's like one of the auction house tables and he's the biggest receiver collector that I, that I know. And he told me a statistic about him that I didn't know. He is one of the only two pitchers that have won 300 games, have a sub three ERA, and have 3,000 strikeouts. And the other is uh, Walter Johnson. <laughs> so, Pretty I mean, that's kind of an interesting connection in terms Pretty of history. So. There, yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he's one of those guys that you don't quite appreciate how good he was until you look mm -hmm. at. Um, you know the numbers the eras uh the whip you know and, and as we know mets fans never threw a no hitter as a met but he threw five one hitters including the famous <laughs> game right. known as the, the imperfect game where he right. had uh, one out in the ninth inning of a perfect game against the cubs and gave up a hit to uh mm -hmm. was that one jim qualls i think and then um of course he went to the reds and threw a no hitter with the reds but that's a whole it's, different story yeah. So we're, uh, we're we're a baseball card channel. So let's uh, let's look first at um, my Mets run here. Um, the reason I started to to plan to do this show is because of the upper left, um, the uh, the rookie card, which we'll see your example of that. But this one was a four, and I've shown this off on uh, on the uh, channel before with a little bit of a of an issue that I'm trying to resolve in my head, um, which is that there's a little bit of wax right here. And this card is clearly better than a four. Um, and if I cracked it and, and, and used the pantyhose to pull off the wax and resubbed it, I'd probably get like a five or six. But mm -hmm. I figure I'm just I'm just gonna keep it as it is rather than take the risk of cracking it. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a you know, forever card. So. Right. Um, and then I collected, you know, I've collected the rest of these cards bit by bit. I don't mind a little CSG if it's a seven or a seven point five, and you know um, the rest of them are all pretty high grade. Um, mm -hmm. The one that I'm really uh, proud of is the 1973, which is a uh, which is an eight. Uh, where is it? Seventy four. Where did I do with the seventy three? It's here somewhere. 
<laughs> um, yeah, there's so many of them. <laughs> so, so I stayed away from the I stayed away from the Reds cards except the ones that kind of fell in my lap. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, the '78, which is a nine, which I think I got on eBay for some ridiculous price. And then the other two I subbed myself the CSG, the '80 and the eight and the '79. And then I also subbed the, um, the the traded card, which I guess is his last. Not his last card. He's in the he's in the eighty seven set too. Yeah, he is. That was his last one, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so here's some oddballs. I have a, a leader card in a seven, just because I got it in a in a bulk with a bunch of other cards. Um, and then there's this big one. Uh, this is the uh, what's it called? The Pro Star promotion. Yeah, that one, looks, that one looks cool. It's a Canadian issue. And uh, I bought this on eBay for like 30 bucks. I'm like, you know, it's a three, but still, it's a great photo. Mm -hmm. And another one of those ones that becomes a forever card. And then, of course, on the far right is something that I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, let me I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, this is um, it's some sort of postcard. This was mm -hmm. given to me by someone in, the, um, in, in one of my chats, one of my card chats, and uh, said to me, you're a Seaver fan. And I'm like, yeah. Do you know what this is? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, you can have it. But on the back, it's just like it's a postcard with um, Kodak is is in here, and that's it. That's the only information. And I've done. I've dug online for this. I can't figure out what it is, but I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. I just keep it in my collection, and there it is. Yeah, no, it's a great piece. I mean, yeah, to any serious Seaver collector, they they would love that. Yeah, it just came for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then the one is the um. This this thing, which is the uh, SSPC, these mm -hmm. are the cards that were uh, like bootleg cards that were introduced in 1975. I remember by, that. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Aronstein, Mike Aronstein, the, the mm -hmm. MA of TCMA. And um, then they, they got into a lawsuit with Tops, and then they had to pull them. But uh, this is a nice one. And, and the, you know, they came in like uh, you bought the full set. So there's a lot of these that are in really nice condition. So mm -hmm. I subbed this and it got an eight, although I kind of feel like it maybe should have gotten a little bit, maybe should have been a nine, but that being as it may. So let's move on to Sammy's cards. And uh, we have this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we both know who that belongs to. <laughs> yeah, what's funny about this is, um, you know, when, when you and I ran into each other at the, uh, at, at the Philly show, I had yet to see... This is Ashish Jay's uh, ten uh, of the Seaver rookie, and I had yet to see his his um, booth yet, so I didn't know it was there. Mm -hmm. So you, and of course Mookie and his friend Pete told me that uh, yeah, that Tom Seaver was was um, was in his booth. So that's mm -hmm. I went over right after I saw you. I'd say within three minutes I had taken this photo, <laughs> uh, and of course, you know he's uh, he's a he's a big time dealer, Ashish, and mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, this is right in line with his usual uh, offerings. And so I saw the 90K, and I was wondering if he was if he had any room on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think, yeah, I think he has it at the county center as well on display. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's funny because you were there yesterday. I'm going to go over there uh, after we're done with recording mm -hmm. and, um, and have a little fun. Um, I don't know if I'm really going to buy anything, but we'll see. You know, famous last words. Um, yeah. so anyway. This is your rookie card, which uh, yes. if we were doing one of those, uh, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, standoffs on who who has the higher ranking, you you win. So. Oh, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's it's. I traded up for it. Uh, I had this was in. I had a PSA three, and I traded up to get this one. This one actually has the. PWCC sticker top fifteen percent, I think it is. But yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, so and, and this, the centering is fantastic. Yeah, no, that was definitely part of the big reason why I wanted to um, get this one because the other one wasn't nearly as centered and softer corners. I put a, I'll put a, I'll always put a priority on getting, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to certain players I collect. Seaver, Mays, uh, I'll always put a premium on trying to get their stuff as best condition as possible. So, uh, frankly, I think that that card um, is undergraded. You know what? That's okay. Um, I'm happy to. <laughs> I think, I think to you, you know, 
as your eye. You know, you, you, you pick yeah, it it's the it's the whole Dylan method. I kind of take I kind of look at it that way. Dylan loves to buy low to mid grade stuff that has high grade appeal. So it's yep. Yeah, I'm pleased with it. Um, you know, it's a nice, uh, no matter what, I mean, it's a nice card to have. I know that they're, you know, if you go to one of the bigger shows like the County Center or Philly, you'll probably see one at every vintage table or most mostly every yeah. vintage table, but it's still it's still nice to see. The guy who um, had the two mantles in Philly back to back, the 252 mantles right next to each other, he um, he's in the same spot at the Philly show every time. And last Philly show, I tried to buy this card from him, and um, he had like six of them. He had everything from like a two to an eight, and I was trying to buy in the range of like three to four, mm -hmm. and his numbers were just were just too high, and you know, so it wasn't something I. I it was like hyper retail above comps, mm -hmm. and you know, when I went out and researched. Um, at lunchtime, I came back to him afterwards, and I said, "Look, this is you know, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm what, what I'm asking for," and he just wouldn't do it. So, um, it's 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 not a it's a card that I tried to get for quite a long time, and I probably mm -hmm. should have done what you did, which was to you know go a little lower and then upgrade. But um, ultimately, I uh, ended up by having the money to buy it from from a golden auction at about what ends up being retail on that that's floor. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I traded up, I definitely, I think I, I paid extra out of pocket because, I mean, you know, when you're trading, when you're trading up, a dealer is going to ask you to, because um, they got to make money on that card. So they, I remember the trade that I made to get that Seaver because it was a PSA 3 going to an SGC 4.5 and it had that appeal. And so I traded away a 1953 three yogi Berra, which was like a one i think mm -hmm. as you one with the with the siever as kind of like a and i think there was like a some cash kicker as well at the time i mean this was going i this was at a time when the you know the market was still very very was pretty high right uh, it is cooled off obviously so um in hindsight it would have been great to do that trade now but you know i think everything is all kind of linear so like my the three that I had was at a higher value than it is now, and the four and a half, same thing. It's all kind of a linear yep. uh, response. So no matter what, I think uh, I think it would have been equivalent no matter when I did the trade. Do you feel like Seaver is undervalued in the hobby? Uh, yeah, I mean the rookie card. Uh, I mean his the sixty seven rookie is obviously um, in, in, is the, is very demanding. People want it um uh, because uh, you know the short being it being a short print right uh you know makes it uh, makes it very appealing for collectors but you know i did a video on this once i might have done the siever comparison but i did kind of like i i'm not an analytic analytical person when it comes to cards um or at least not to the same extent as some others but uh i did a video showcasing the difference in percentage between uh, a player's rookie card versus their second year. Right. Now, Seaver is may not be the best example because it's a short print. So that kind of adds more value to it for that reason. Yep. But like you look at, so let's say the same grade of PSA five, that's middle of the road. PSA five. I haven't looked lately, but I, if I had to guess, they probably go for about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars maybe for a Seaver rookie. And you compare that to a PSA five is nineteen sixty eight. I mean, you're looking at a huge, significant yeah, drop. Yeah. We're talking about at max seventy five to eighty dollars. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. I um, I'll show you this guy because you you have a high grade of this also, which we'll mm -hmm. get to. But I recently upgraded this to a seven point five. I had um, a six, a PSA six, which I sold, and indeed I mailed it yesterday, and I could not get. I sold it on eBay for $115 and it was a six. It was a nice six too. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after fees and everything, I, I got the payout today. It was like $98. So I'm like, I literally got yeah. less than a hundred dollars for a PSA six of his first solo card with the rookie cup on it. And to me, it's, that, yeah. that is a steal. That is a steal. Um, so yeah, it's, 
again, it kind of goes back to what you're saying and like the question now, is he undervalued? I, uh, yep. And the hobby? Absolutely. He's not going to yep. command the same prices that Nolan Ryan commands, but you know, if you ask me, I, Tom Seaver is the more, to me is the, the better pitcher. Nolan Ryan yep. is the more decorated pitcher, unfortunately. Yeah. No, I mean, Seaver uh, clearly is a better pitcher. I mean, his war is like, I don't know, yeah. close to a I think, right? And, and, Ryan's is in like the 60s or 70s, whatever it is. It's, it's this card. I feel like, you know, you, like you said, it's a short print. So mm -hmm. you're going to get all 67, 1967 collectors. It's a popular set to collect because yeah. the, the high numbers create a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's a Hall of Fame rookie card. So people do Hall of Fame rookie cards. Um, right. So this is the, the value of this is, is enhanced by those things. But yeah, sixty-eight. The sixty-nine, which I got, uh, I think it's a five. Yeah, it's a five. This cost me at the peak of the hobby. I think I spent sixty dollars on this card, and it's a gorgeous card from mm -hmm. from from a, a a Cy Young championship season. So anyway, I uh, might yeah uh, my my rant about Seer being under under uh, valued. We can move well, on. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you can look at the Nolan Ryan 68 rookie and then look at his 69 card. I mean, it's still a drop off, but like a PSA 5 Nolan Ryan rookie, I'm guessing goes for about, I don't know, maybe I don't know, 12 to 1500, maybe something like that, maybe even more yeah. than that. I think it's more than that, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then his, but his 69 card is. The PSA five can go for about three to three fifty, so it's yep. it's pretty interesting to see how more demanding Roland Ryan is in comparison. Well, the, it, if you're doing that, that's also going to be skewed by the fact that Ryan seventy is a high, a short print high number. His seventy one is uh, not the last series, but the second to last series, and it's a little bit a little bit more rare. Um, and it's well, 72. I, mean, I was I was only yeah I mean if you only look at the 68 and 69 and just kind of compare right. the two and then you compare the 67 to 68 of Tom Seaver but yep. yeah no you're right the 70 and 71 the 70 is a high number so that adds to it and the 71 yep. is a semi high so yeah it's, it's interesting well here's your uh, your 68 which is a gorgeous example congratulations yeah. on that one yeah, um, was yeah. that Straight up buy? Uh, this one, no. I bought this raw for like $50. I think it was $50. Sorry, it's not coming through all the way. But um, yeah, I bought it for $50. And then I submitted it. And I, th you know, I thought I was going to get like a 5 or a 6 at the time. And thankfully, it came back a 6.5. And, and, you know, uh, for Seaver, the as far as his tops run, I mean, I, I only have his 67 and 68. And then all oh, the 69 too, which has an interesting story. Yeah, that's uh, it is an interesting story because I can see it's got somebody else on the card there. <laughs> yeah, this has this is this is gone. This is this has come and gone uh, for many years. <laughs> I gave this to my sister when I got out of when I lost interest in baseball cards and she wasn't really into baseball cards either. She's never, she never has been, but she kept it. And this is what's amazing. I mean, the card's not in great shape, but what's amazing about it is that she had it out of a top loader for, I don't know how many years, maybe 20 years. And she, when I got back into the hobby again, she gave it back to me and, nice. you know, it's just remarkable. Uh, I don't think there's any creases. I mean, there's some, you know, some soft, corners and such but there's no wrinkles which i found to be amazing i don't know where this thing was sitting but yeah i got this initially at a card show my dad probably got this for me when i was younger at the county center when it was the glory rothstein shows oh yeah 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 and so uh yeah i held i just i hold on to this for that very reason alone it's doesn't have much turn it doesn't have much monetary value but it does have a good nostalgia value Oh yeah, absolutely, and mm -hmm. and a fantastic reason to keep it because if it means something to you, you know, it's yeah. it's more than a better than a ten, you know. Um, do yeah. you have any idea the, who the player that's kind of has like a tiny little sliver of? Um, I haven't the, really, I haven't invested yeah. any time looking into it. I imagine if I look into the cut sheets and maybe I can find to, I can get pictures to see where Seaver's placed, and then I'm, that'll give me a better idea as far as who it is. 
I saw recently where someone um, got two got the same card that from the same sheet. I don't know if you saw this. I saw it on Twitter. I don't know what I don't even remember what year, but it was something in the seventies where they got the the miscut, and then they got the other miscut that matched up perfectly, and you could put the two cards together. <laughs> the odds of that are amazing. I mean, how many cards do they have? Yeah. Miss- tens of thousands, and you to find the miss the exact miscut to match your miscut is kind of amazing, but. That's, that's uh, exceedingly rare to find that yeah. to get to be able to get get that in the wild. Yeah, it, it it's well, it's crazy. You know, it's like mm-hmm. the guys who um, who write their who wrote their names on cards, which I did when I was a little kid, and then mm-hmm. somebody sends it back to them <laughs> when they're an adult. That has happened. <laughs> I saw that happen on Facebook. Guys, like uh, I got this card in the mail. It has my name on it. I, I collected this as a little kid. So that's another like mm-hmm. amazing. Oh oh oh. Oh, I'm moving the slides, but we're not on the slides. All right. So these guys, let me just make sure yeah. I'm the right one. Okay. So these guys, I, I need to know. Um, let's start with the one on the right, which mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get to the one on the left in a second because that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Card. So what's the one on the right? This one. Yeah. So I always like to show this one because uh, I use the. I use the Seaver face as when I'm in awe of something. So, uh, yeah, this one I I was set up at the. Let me bring it back a little bit. I was set up at the Orange Connecticut show, and I was set up outside. Uh, this is probably about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. And a guy came up to the table, and he had a whole lot of um, uh, like oddball memorabilia. He also had a '71 Ryan and '71. Uh, Jerry Kuzman car. They were very, very just pristine condition. I still have the Ryan. I sold the Kuzman, but anyway, uh, this is the, this comes from the, I think the picture packs and nope. um, of all the, of all the, uh, all the Mets from, I want to say this was from 1970, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It might be 69. Um, I, yeah. So I have the entire pack and it has like, you know, it has Gil Hodges and it has Seaver and it has, um, I forgot who else, but uh, I mean, it has all the star Mets. And so um, I like this one a lot. I'm probably going to get it submitted uh, to SGC, if maybe at Strongsville. I haven't really decided yet, but mm-hmm. that's how I picked it up. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't find any value on these. I only saw that there's one guy selling one right now for about 60 bucks for the Seaver alone. But I mean, I don't think it's worth nearly that much, but it would just be really nice to see this in a, in, a, in an SGC slab because it apparently they will they will take this. It's it's they will do it and it's not too big. Right? No, also, I think the maximum is what like uh, Orlando told me it was like eight and a half by eleven is the maximum. I think they'll take. Yeah, I've been thinking about submitting some cards from the '30s that are a little big, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just going to keep them raw. But that is a fantastic, uh, yeah, shot of him. You know, Seaver. Um, was very photogenic. Um, I I've always liked the. Um, this is the first year I collected, but I've always loved this card. I have like ten examples of it. Oh, it's variety. a great card. It's a great yeah. card. Of, it's a great photo of him. A uh, great profile shot showcasing, yeah. Yeah. you know, from the chest up. And um, yeah, it's I, just. I, I just I love that card. Um, so let's go back to this guy because this yeah. is something I want to know about. Um, yeah. It says 1967 Mets postcard. So if it's 1967, mm-hmm. that means this is a Tom Seaver rookie. Yes, it can be classified as one if that's the route you want to take. I like to think of it as that. Um, I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, the 1967 Mets postcard, uh, or excuse me, the top 67 with uh, Seaver and Dennehy on it. Um, if you go to a big enough show like the national or the Philly show or any of like the ones that have like the Nashville show or what Dallas, whatever, uh, if you go to any of those shows, chances are a lot of the, you're going to see at most vintage tables, you'll see that top 67 card. I can tell you from my experience of all the shows that I've gone to, I've never seen this. Yeah. I've never seen this on display on any display table or a display case. Yep. And chances are, it's people don't want the uh, dealers don't want to sell it because it's uh, it's not commonly found and it's maybe for their collections. 
or just maybe they, I mean, it could also be the fact that they just don't want to take up too much room. Who knows? But nevertheless, my experiences, whenever I've gone around asking about this card at the Philly show, nobody had this. Mm -hmm. So how I found this was on eBay one night. I just did a search for this and it came up and the asking price was uh, $1,000. Oh. And so, yeah, it's it's up there. I mean, it's a you know PSA five, and these don't have a lot of comps to them, so it was kind of tough to come up with a number um, because the last time this one of these were sold might have been a couple of years ago or something. But uh, I made an offer of seven fifty. Uh, I thought it was you know like that's kind of like my comfort price on it, and so I was waiting all night. The next day, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, should I just pay the 1000 Should I just do it? Because someone else, because they had like 15 or 15 watchers on it. So, mm. but then the next day, while I was set up at Garfield, I get a text notification that my offer, my, oh, well, actually, first, my credit card showed on my phone that the amount went through. And so I was oh. like, oh, I guess either I was scammed or I won or I won the Seaver. So... <laughs> I checked back on eBay, and lo and behold, uh, the the, um, the eBay uh, seller um, accepted my offer. So that was really cool. Well, I can confirm to you, having gone to many, many, many shows over the years, that I have never seen this before, not once. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, whatever you – I mean, you're right. I mean, it's almost like whatever you want to ask for it as the seller, mm -hmm. you know, you can ask for it. And hold out, and you know, you were you, all he had to do was say no, and you, you might have gone to a thousand. So, you know, good for it's, you, yeah. The price, but if I were to mm -hmm. if I were to sell this from your standpoint, I wouldn't even put a thousand on it, I'd put like 1200 on it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. it's you know, but it, it's like, like in your case, I mean, you uh, what was it like the receiver card you bought, like, uh, yeah, you're the one you're you know, it was gonna. Oh, you're the rookie. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, the one you're going to hold on to for a long, you're forever. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, I don't want to crack it, even though I, I know yeah. that this wax is exactly. off. So, I mean, yeah. it's the same with this. I mean, I'm more, I'm more open to selling the 67 tops now to help kind of offset things, um, but I'm reluctant as well. Uh, so it's kind of like an angel devil on your shoulders, like, go ahead, sell it. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll get some money back. And the other one's like, you're going to regret that. So, yeah, I mean, you're, I feel like I would like it, like I did with the 68, I got, you know, I got an upgrade and then I was able to sell my six. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. sell it until I got, you know, uh, the right opportunity to get, you know, to get yeah. an upgrade, maybe at a little better price. Um, then, then you would get like if you end mm -hmm. up getting a, a, a six or a seven, whatever. But um, you know, you, things seem to fall into your lap. So <laughs> I would. It's uh, just yeah, uh, it's right, right, uh, you know, right, right place, right, right time, right place. So it's well, you know, I think part of it. Look, I, I, I'm not going to stroke you here, but the reality is you're a good guy and people like you. So Thank you know, you. if you're out enough and you're at enough shows and you know people. You, things are going to find you, I feel like, you know, so, you know, good luck with that. And, and you know, eventually you'll probably end up with seven, hopefully, <laughs> well, someday also. <laughs> so I'm we'll okay see. with, I'm okay with, uh, with, with what I have now. I mean, yeah. I generally, if I see 68 Seavers out there, I mean, I always love looking at them and I'll generally will buy them for inventory, but if the, if the price is right, but, um, I, you know, the six and a half that I have in the 68 is more than good for me. So yeah. I don't go no, out I... looking to upgrade it, but, uh, you never know. Sometimes you can, I mean, I've seen some really nice looking 68s that are, that have really good centering to them. Not too often, but when I do, it's like, okay, maybe this is, maybe this is the day. <laughs> yeah. It's not a, it's not a difficult far card to find certainly. Yeah. Um, so here's the, uh, Here's the transogram, mm. which I have seen before and, and you've shown before. And yeah. uh, it's funny because I was sort of adjacent to this purchase. I wasn't there when you bought it, but, you know, I know exactly mm -hmm. where you got it from, the guy who you got it from. And I know he yeah. was right next to our, our mutual friend, Brian Roth. Um, yeah, this is the, from Champion yeah. Sports Cards. Now, so I'll share a story. I mean, I mean, I... 
so just for anyone watching, I paid 150 for this one. They the, the dealer champion sports cards had it marked at 200. Paid 150. I probably paid a little bit more, but I don't care. It's a uh, it's it wasn't to me. It wasn't uh, I, I, they didn't bleed me dry on it. So, uh, but funny story about this. When I was at the show yesterday, um, there was a dealer who was in the first row. Like if you when you walk in, you go all the way to the right against the wall. Mm -hmm. um there's usually like an aisle there's an aisle of dealers that sell oddball stuff that i found over there there's like guys that sell mm -hmm. programs and whatnot and then there was a table of this younger guy probably if i had to guess he would probably in maybe my age maybe a little bit older and he was selling mostly modern stuff but then i started noticing he had a lot of siever stuff like oddball siever stuff and he had the uh, the milk duds, not the entire box, but just the card cut, cut out. out of him. Yeah. And so I was looking, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool." I mean, this is right up my alley. And, but I didn't end up buying the milk dud. It just it wasn't in great shape, and he probably would have given me a great price on it because he was saying like, "I'll do much better on it." But I just I was like, "Ah, you know, I'm gonna hold off." So uh, later on that day, I, you know, I, I walk away, and then I. I'm at some part of the show, somewhere the layout, and I was standing, and then I, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. He watches my channel. I always mess up. I'm just not great with names and great with faces, but I think his name is Mike. I'm going to gonna, gonna go with Mike for now. Um, Mike comes up to me and she holds up a Tom Seaver transigram, and it has a price mark of $49. It's low grade, but uh, $49, and he's like, I got, he, he jokingly says to me, um, you know, I I, uh, I I blame you. I blame you for this, Sammy, because um, <laughs> you know I wouldn't have bought this otherwise. And I'm like, well, how much did you pay for it? He goes, thirty bucks. I'm like, thirty dollars? Why? Yeah, I should I'm, I should be complaining to you. Like, what? <laughs> you got that? That's nobody else in that. Nobody else had that transigram of Tom Seaver at that show. It just happened to be in this one guy's display case, and. From forty nine to thirty dollars. I mean, I told him, I'm like, my God, you got to steal on it because, you know, those transograms are not commonly found. It's a niche market of collectors that want it, but yeah. still, uh, you're in a New York market. You're gonna want. There's gonna be people who will want that. And like he was thinking, I don't know. He actually said to me, he said, um, he's like, oh. I, when I went up, when I went up to that display case and I saw it, I figured if Sammy didn't buy it, then it's probably crap. I'm like, and I told him, no, I just didn't even see it. I totally missed it. I would have snatched it up for thirty dollars, but I'm yeah. happy. He, I'm happy he got it because uh, I know, knowing him, he is. Yeah, he collects Seaver stuff as well. So uh, I was thinking about it on the ride home, like, man, thirty dollars would have been great on that card. But at the same time, I'm happy he got it. So that's cool. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go now to the show after we finish recording and go right to that guy and, and, and see if I can buy that milk duds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually debating. I might go today. I might just go yeah. just to walk around. So if I do, well, I'm sure we'll bump into each other. Uh, and hopefully he still has it. He had it marked at $29. So I'm sure you can get it for a, a oh. good nice deal. I, I'll, I'll flip out a 20 for, for that in, in, a, in yeah. a park. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I, like I said to you before, I don't know if I said this before we were recording or not, but I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I spent a lot of money in Philly yeah. and Strongville is coming up in less than a month now, I think, mm -hmm. right? Today's the 22nd or third, whatever yeah, it is. 23rd today. 23rd. Yeah. yeah today's so the 23rd. I guess it's the, I think I'm driving on the Friday the 19th. I think mm -hmm. so yeah we're we're talking about uh four weeks so yeah uh, yeah so i'm going to save up some money for for strongsville because uh you know there are going to be a lot of people there that i've never met who i really want to meet and want to talk cards with and and walk the floor with so you know i don't want to do that with 50 dollars in my pocket because that's not going to help yeah me. totally understandable totally understandable yeah but we'll see i mean you never know i go up to white plains sometimes expecting nothing and, and i come up with you know four or five really good things so we'll see right. um but so the transigram uh is you know and it's funny because the you had the the viewer of your channel who you know has, has been motivated by you to buy it and, I, and i'm of the same i'm of the same ilk honestly 
Having seen this card, I know the photo because it's the same photo as the 68 and 69, which is a great photo. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a rare card and it's a Seaver card. And it's a Seaver card from, you know, this is, what's the date? It's 69, right? Yeah. 69, so, yeah. So it's kind it's, of, it's, it's a championship year. It, 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 oh, it hits a lot of buttons. It, it mm -hmm. uh, cr crosses a lot of T's, so to speak. So, so that's our last slide. Um, I really want to thank you for coming on. I know you, uh, you know, you're mm -hmm. very busy on weekends. I know this, um, because of all your videos with the, with the Garfield and the, and the Mount Kisco and the orange and all the local shows. And of course the bigger shows, which there is one this weekend. So yeah. thank you, my friend for coming on for mm -hmm. showing us some of your fantastic Seaver cards. I'm now on the lookout for that 67 postcard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I ever, if I ever find it, which I doubt I will, uh, I'll, They're out uh, there. I'll tell you. I will definitely. I think there's one. It. There's there's one on eBay right now. Um, it's low grade, but I can. Yeah, I think I, got, I think if it's still there, I'll I'll send it to you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, viewers, uh, I will be back next weekend. I'm not sure what with, but uh, definitely going to be more shows. No more weeks off for a while. I'm even going to do a show from Strongsville. So, Sam, thanks very much for coming on. And thank viewers, you, man. We'll See you next weekend. Take care.